one zero. Sky condition, few clouds, 2,500. Temperature one two, dew point four. Altimeter three zero one seven. Localizer DME, runway two eight left approach in use. Landing and departing, runways two eight. No airmen, south ramp and helipad closed. UAS operations one nautical mile, southwest of the field, surface to 200 feet AGL, and effect daily and coastal waters, available on high loss, flight watch, GPS or flight service frequency. Fire. Advise on initial contact, you have information, bravo. Hayward Airport information, bravo, 2054 Zulu observation, wind 280 at 4, visibility 10. Yankee left 270, departure is approved. Remain below 1,000 to overhead midfield. No way, 28 left fully. Clear for takeoff. 28 left, uh, clear for takeoff, and uh, remain below 1,000. Six Mike Yankee. Okay. Nose gears locked. Hey, 99.5. go. Airspeed's alive. 80. 80. Pause the break. Pause the break. Just 27 Hotel, runway 2 left, clear for the option. 27 Hotel, clear for the option, runway 2 left. At 400 feet, start our turn. Pressurization's kicking in. Still got the airport. He wants you over midfield if it's possible. Uh, it's awesome. Like that? Very nice. Five star. Cut. <laughs> Let's go and turn right 30 degrees. Uh. I six Mike Yankee traffic ahead into your left at 10 o'clock and four miles. Eastbound, 1000 indicated is Robinson R44. Six Mike Yankee, we're turning to the right. Roger. That's a good heading. Uh. Hey, how do you feel about it, your igniters? I'll leave them on when we're low. Okay. Unless you want them out of the audio, I'm happy to do that now. Okay, cool. Hey, help me with the shells to the Charlie. Yes. See ya. See ya. Yeah, Six point eight. Okay, seven hotel. Runway two eight left at Zulu taxi. Zulu. Hey, I'm number three, three nine six Mike Yankee, climb maintain 3,500. 3,500. That's what I love. 5,500 foot per minute. That's a good without even trying. I'll need to go. Go. Uh, level out temporarily, got a target. Central aircraft, air confirmation, Charlie, current wind, call and altimeter 3015. Autopilot off. Hey, we're Tower, right. Skyhawk 72653, at 2507 miles to the northeast, to request the full stop landing with information, Bravo. Hey, we're on 1215, 7,000 foot per minute. Good sustained 4,000 foot per minute. OK, 
Okay, so this will be another one of these amazing Sparrow Aviation uh, running this great practical pilot series for, for us to learn by. This is also a Greg and Elliot epic adventure video simulating an engine failure in uh, Pratt & Whitney powered Epic LT. And I go from 1,272 equivalent shaft horsepower to nothing in a, in a second here and show just how we're going to handle that engine failure. And uh, in a nutshell, we're just going to go right through getting towards a nearby airport and going through a, a little bit of a troubleshoot. And we're going to feather and we're going to shut everything down while we uh, prepare to shoot a GPS approach down to low minimums. We've got a 500 foot overcast is what we're simulating. We're just going to try to get it down on the ground in one piece. Okay, so now we're having our engine failure. And uh, sorry about the bump, pulled my power back a little quick there. Here's our engine failure. First thing we want to think about, just like any airplane, is getting it pointed towards the airport that would be suitable. And then uh, as we go at uh, standard rate turns, since we're in IMC conditions and uh, pitching over for our trimming for best glide, we're going to also be thinking about what kind of troubleshoot measures we can take. At this point, the descent rate's rather rapid. We, uh, a uh, windmill, are going to lose about 1,500 foot per minute at 130 knots. That pitch attitude's probably going to end up being quite a bit low, nose low. And, uh, we're going go to pin our bore lever, lever on, on and we're going to advance that slowly. Yeah. And what we're doing there is we're making sure that uh, we don't have a problem with the fuel controller. Uh, if we did, that would uh, recover entire power control. It's just a little trickier to use than your throttle lever. So we're going to simulate At this feathering. point, since none of that worked, we're going to simulate a feather. We would be pulling this all the way back to feather. But instead we're Prop would eventually come to a stop, but instead we're going to simulate a, a zero power. thrust. Add a little bit of power so that we get um, more like an 800 foot per minute descent rate. That's what we would get with... Uh, feather, gear up, and flaps up in this airplane. 130 knots, 800 foot per minute. This looks pretty good. Maybe a little more power. I think initially it requires some of them to stable out a little. Yeah, now if you were to pitch for 130, I think it would uh, do the trick. Yeah. Okay, so now that we're pointing in the right direction, we know we've got the field made, but we really want to have a GPS approach also. So uh, Greg's going to go ahead and load that. Right there, over here. So he goes into the procedure, select approach, and he goes through plugging Part that all three in. Zero. And we'll go ahead and show what we're doing here. We loaded that approach. Clear back out of the flight plan. Okay, and then we can see that we're in pretty good shape for turning left to a right downwind, okay. if you want to do that. Uh, we've got 7,500 feet. Now the Altitude loss is more gradual. I'm going to have to power it back just a little bit to simulate zero thrust. There we go. Okay, so we did the restart. Of course, we do the communications. We come in here and we do our transponder 7700. Uh, even if we're on with uh, flight following or on an IFR clearance, we normally would be. Uh, we still want to squawk 7700 because that lets all the other controllers in the area know what's going on over here. And then, uh, of course, we would stay with our current NorCal or center frequency, and they would uh, uh, they would receive our Mayday call with our three souls on board and uh, White Epic attempting emergency landing at uh, at Byron. We've had a total engine failure, and we're uh, we're gliding for a GPS approach. If you could keep everybody out of the area, that'd be great. And uh, then we might just turn off that frequency so that we don't have uh, a lot of invasion of communications. So if we keep the nearest page up, we can keep track of how far we are from the field. We're five miles out. We're at 6,800 feet because the field elevation is. 79 feet. We really can just treat it as if it's level. As far as the math goes, we're trying to be um, going to be about a thousand feet for every mile. If you guys uh, want to check out the other video we did in the Cirrus, 
It shows this pretty well. Now we're coming up on... also see uh, BAP P here at 2,400. Yeah, right. Exactly. We can see we're way above the final approach fix altitude. It's definitely a good reference. All right, so we'll go ahead and start the turn now because we're at 6,500 and we're at 6.5 miles. So at this point, it's a good time to make that turn to final. And we're just going to intercept the uh, final approach course. And then we'll decide when we point the nose down at the threshold, we're going to be able to decide whether we need uh, more drag or not. And once we decide that, we'll start with flaps. And we'll continue with gear and second notch of flaps once uh, we get to the kind of angle and position that we need in order to make that uh, suitable uh, transition to touchdown. All right, looking good so far. If this doesn't sequence on, we can always hit the suspend button. That'll force the sequence to uh, cut it. There we go. Now we can see that we're seven miles from Byron and 5,700 feet. We want to still be pitched for 130, though. We want to retain our best glide until we decide that we're uh, established on final in a good position to uh, start steepening it up. We need to back this power off just a little bit in order to do a true simulation of our glide performance here. Or just pick it up. That looks better. That okay, we've speed. got the glide path. We can see it's way below us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start dropping the nose down. We know that if we drop the nose, we're going to accelerate. So we go ahead and put in a notch of flaps right off the bat. So we keep that intercept angle going to the approach. Now we can see if we drop the nose further, yeah, it's definitely going to increase the speed. So this is a point where we feel pretty insured that uh, putting the gear down is going to do the trick. Nice, that's looking good. All right, now you can see with the nose down on the flight path indicator, we've got a gradual speed increase. So we have to keep in mind what our final flap speed is. Final flap speed on this is 130 knots. 130. So what we're going to have to do, because we're continuing to increase on speed, we're, we're going to pop back. the nose up, we're going to get to nose 130. Flaps. We're going to put in those flaps, and then we're going to drop it back down. If it were a real emergency, we might exceed that flap speed a little bit. But since we're trying to be nice to the airplane, we're not going to do that. Fire and traffic, epic simulated engine failure. We're uh, coming up on a three-mile final for runway 30 at Byron. Okay, now at this point, you just point that nose right to the threshold. You can see this slip is doing the trick. Just keep it right on the threshold. Traffic, 11 o'clock, low, left, As than the one decays, mile. There's really less, uh, less power. We have to ease the power back in order to make it work. We've got three greens coming across the fence. Because of the slower speed, we've got uh, less drag. All right, we're going to back over to final.